What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? The coach, you know it's your boy, Beehive Radio. Shout in as always. I got my podcast partner off in this thing. OG Gangsta, Wicked the Ghetto Mafia, a.k.a. Big Galaxy. Man, What's I'm, going on, man? It's king day to day, but I'm a little upset. It's like kind of bittersweet, you know. I, I just recently got diagnosed. I have to wear glasses, man. So okay, so you. I was trying to figure out, you know what I'm saying, what, you know, do I look a little smarter? I mean, it looks like you're more Malcolm than Martin on King Day. That, that's what I'm getting off of it right now, Wick. You're looking a little bit more Malcolm than Martin. Yeah, I don't went blind, man. For everybody out there, I guess PA, uh, service announcement, man, go get your eyes checked, man. I, <laughs> I thought it'd be never the point. Uh, you know, I see a, a point in my life where I had to wear glasses, but here we are. Hey. I'm going to take them off just for this show, though. I got to get used to them, behind. Exactly. No, I mean, anybody got time to be watching over here four eyes? <laughs> looking like Dexter? Smarty Yard? Yes, know. sir. What's happening, man? Hey, I feel man. good, though. I'm glad to be here. I feel good. Well, answer me this, though, Wick, because we was talking off camera, man, and uh, we was talking about it being King Day and the King holiday, man. How do you feel like Dr. King would feel about the state of black America right now, man? Now that's a good question. Uh, you hit me. You hit me with that right there. Me personally, and I've talked about this with uh, with, with you know friends of mine before and and family members. Um, I think that if King were alive, and he he he, he has plenty of kids, so he has kids alive. Um, yeah. You know, family family members alive, so it's not like he just you know. Uh, the King presence is not here, especially in the ATL. Uh, but I feel like he would be probably half glass full because uh, mm-hmm. that was, you know, me viewing him. I didn't know him personally, but me viewing him, it seems like the type of guy he was. Like I say, you call me Malcolm X, I think X will look at it half empty. Mm. So it all in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, I think King, if he were here today, he would be optimistic, but he would have concerns. Let's just be honest. Um, when you got black young black men uh, going to cookie stores and getting gunned down, yeah. When you have, you can't even go to a funeral now. Yeah, you go to a funeral and. You know, and that's another thing, man. When did it get to the point? I know we used to be, you know, when we kind of grew up behind, and especially with me before you, but even in your generation, I we had rules to, you know, rules to serve. You know, the the, the women, the kids, and a funeral was off limits. You know, that was that man's day, and, and we could throw a wedding in there. You know, yeah. you know that was off limits. The church, you yeah. know, hey, even. Even gang members that was on other sides of the fence have met up at church, you yeah. know. But now you can't even go to church uh, or a funeral, and that's what I think that King would be very disappointed about. Um, I mean, also with what you said, we got to send our condolences to Yo Gotti and his family, too, for the death of Big Juke, man. Because, absolutely. You know, that was a devastating blow to hip-hop as well with him being his brother and partner in that label, mm-hmm. moving the culture for it, man. Correct. I mean, it's it's just terrible that we didn't got to a point in hip-hop and just in our community to where this keeps on happening. It seems like there's no solution to it, though, Wick. It, uh, it, there is a solution to it. I'm looking at the camera tell the people the solution. The solution is tune in to be high and weak because that's what we've been pushing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I I look at comments. I read comments sometimes. Uh, sometimes we'll we'll come in here and we'll take a, a position on something that's not popular uh, with a percentage of the fan base out there, and um, They'll they'll get on you about it, but one thing people can really say about the the platform is that we are leading the culture in a direction that has never been and and not just positive, but that has never you know really gone gone before. Giving a voice to just the common uh, people in the hood, you know, Uh, they have a voice from the the type of guests that we bring on. Yeah, Uh, I would say that um, if a lot of the people that's, that that tunes into this platform, that has subscribed to this platform, a lot of people that come on as podcast partners and as guests, I think we have enough power and influence right now in the hood that if we if we keep on pressing, it seems like a lot of times that is we run in a race that's gonna never end. Yeah, I feel what you, you, you like what you're saying a minute ago. You just you just said it that like you know, it's it's it's, it's over and over and over and over and over again. You kind of get numb to it a little bit. 
Uh, but I feel like behalf we keep on pushing with everybody. I just you know the people too. It take the people out there, and we keep on pushing that. I I see progress in it, and and you know in the community. I'm out here now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not bougie like you. Oh hell you know no! I'm standing still, behind I'm man still wall. Ten ti- You don't come in the street. You don't be in the street. You're not in the street. Street every damn day. To now. Uh-uh, but uh-uh. um, now nah, I think that uh, King would be, you know, halfway uh. It would be it would be you know half glass full for him for somebody like X or some half the glass would be half empty I the, you know Elijah Muhammad let's you know it's half empty you know you know so. with this being King Day I got to hit you with a King quote that just kind of you know really goes with what we've been seeing in hip hop and a lot in our community uh, Dr King said an eye for an eye leaves everybody blind and I and in you know what? This is what I want to say to you and to to the people out there. There are no, there is no blueprint for what's right and wrong when it comes to civil civil rights and how to play it. Mm-hmm. And 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 y'all bear with me. I know some people are like, what is he talking about? There's no blueprint. We, you know, we got to fight fire with fire. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I, that what you just said that matter. Mm-hmm. I for I leave everybody blind. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you know, no, nah, you might be blind. I ain't gonna be blind. So you know, let's let me try my luck. I roll the dice with that right there. So you know, I've always been on the mindset that I have. There have been situations behind that I have ran from that. And and when I mean ran, I'm not talking about the physical running for. But I see something about to happen, or I have got tipped off to something. I say, you know what? This isn't in my favor to act to act as now. So I ain't brought my pistol with me. You know, I see. You know, I'm, I'm talking about my old street stuff. Right? Yeah. I ain't talking about, you know, right Yesterday. now. I don't have those problems exactly. now. But I'm talking about, Other you know, in, me, uh, but in my 20s, you know, and, you know, we out there in the hood and we doing work and, you you know, we meet up at the club and I see 10, 11 guys come in. I'm in up my old lady. So I say, you know what, let me, this is the time right now not to make a scene. Let me slide on out the back door with my old lady. Yeah. I'm, the, the, fav- the, the odds are not in my favor to win this particular situation. So t- sometimes you do have to turn another cheek. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, I so said, you know what? It ain't but two of them. You know, eh. if I knock him out, you know what I'm saying? I, I, maybe I can get a little rep from it. So my thing is sometimes the King method is the best method. Sometimes the X uh, method is the best method. And you got to know the situation to be able to choose. Exactly. Uh, I agree with that, too. But at the end of the day, with that eye for eye stuff, I mean, when everybody's blind, you can't move the culture for it. By the end of it, because at the end of the day, an eye for an eye means everybody's going to get it at the end. I, Whether we draw the line and say, okay, that's enough, it's enough blind people. Everybody done got, you know, dealt with. Where do we draw the line at and say, okay, man, let's try to figure out how to heal? Where does the healing come in at? I, I Is think, it always going to be an eye for an eye and no healing? Now, 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 are we talking? See, we, we now, now, we have to be clear on what are we talking about? Are we talking about the civil right movement that that's from, you know, from black to white? Or are we talking about black on black movement? Well, no, what, uh, are we, no, I wasn't talking about no civil rights. I'm talking about. In our community. In our community. Us going back and forth with each other. Okay. And eye for an eye leaves okay. everybody blind in okay. our community. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. So that, that's where I'm at with that. It's like now when it comes to civil rights, you got to fight for your right gotcha. to party. Okay. Exactly. So exactly. I'm definitely with a good fight for some civil rights. Okay. Now you got, okay. that's worth the fight. That's what, that's what I was trying to d- distinguish which battle are we talking about exactly. here. Exactly. I'm talking our about own in battle. our personal battles in our community. Well, what are we doing to heal versus kill? And that's just the bottom damn line. I mean, it seems like it just keeps on going, and it's a never-ending cycle to where by the end of it, uh, we losing the whole generation. We done seen it in hip-hop already. I've been screaming it for the longest. Correct. But folks act like they don't hear me. But I said, hey, do y'all realize that we lost a whole generation of artists to the point to where hip hop is so doggone weak the music ain't even good because the people that were delivering some of the best music is gone now? Whether it be from drugs or whether it be from murder. We I, just been losing. Yeah. Well, it's a mindset too, behind when you when you have when we come on here and we talk about this type of stuff right here, now it does well, don't get me wrong. 
Uh, and this video will will go because they'll share it. Uh, but let's not let's not kid ourselves. We come over here and we talk about you know Cat Williams crap and stuff like that and uh, just stuff monkey stuff. That's what uh, we in the community. That's what we value. BS drama. Uh, we've been exploited for that. Uh, the love and hip hop type stuff. Uh, uh, we live in that. In the in the community, uh, not taking care of the black women, the black women not respect uh, respecting the black man, um, and that trickles down to this generation. Our generation, be how was a crack generation, uh, a drug generation, a lot, and the, and and as well as being preyed on by uh, systematic racism. So you put all that stuff together right there. That's what's going on with this generation right now. Yeah. We wasn't in, in in a you know I was in the club with my son. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? I'm, 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 you know, I'm 40 and me and him in the same car. I'm like, no, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I think that, th you know, this this generation is is where they are because of the decisions that we made in the 90s, in the 80s, in the 70s. We, I think our decisions have a big impact on the kids. Today they, fought, they were fatherless. Then now... The father now is is you can't even really be a mentor to young black men, or especially young black women, because we so guarded with our kids now. I mean, you can't even tell a, a child like like when I grew up uh, behind. I say this all the time. I, my whole my entire street, Green Forest Drive, McAfee. Keller Road, that whole community raised me. Mm -hmm. Had if we were saw if we were doing something wrong, Miss Emma down the street, uh, or you know what I'm saying, or Miss Anna over here, or you know what I'm saying, Miss Jenkins and Mrs. Jenkins, they they you know, Rod. Mm -hmm. You know, don't you know, walk me home. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna know, hey, you know, Rob's down here, you know what I'm saying? So now man try to walk a kid home there and tell his mom something. Well you didn't have to you didn't have to tell him, you know, so we have we have now a a uh a disconnect in our community raising the kids itself. Yeah. It's all really the onus is on whatever parents are in the house. So if you're a single dad, now it's all on you. If you're a single mom, now it's all on you. It's not it's not the community no more. When I was young, um uh, <clears throat> uh we had my mom used to have, you know, Mr. Jimmy, them down there, we used to chain ties. He would come pick us up, you know, and, and take us to work. And it, like I said, it was just a, it was a community, um, you know, the community raised me. But now I don't think that we have that. And that's what's troubling. This thing about what the next generation is fixing to be like. If these are the fathers and the mothers that are out here right now, that's in their 20s and, you know, and, and early 30s, these are going to be the mothers and the fathers. Where do you think this new generation is fixing to be? Because, uh, you know, I, besides, you know, twerking on the headlights and showing switches, the girls twerking on the headlights and the men showing their switches and money, these are the fathers and the mothers of the kids now. Uh, that's what I'm really, really concerned about. Um, where do we go? You know, where are we going? Hopefully, like I said, with platforms like this, and we can change the narrative to the narrative with, <clears throat> with a lot of these different platforms that are out here that all they do is celebrity gossip, talk about what rapper ain't who he fucking and what female, uh, you know, it, I mean, it's just dumb shit. Hopefully we can change, we can influence the, those type of podcasts also so they can join what we're doing and make an impact because there's a lot of them out here and it's and their podcasts out here, they have more numbers than us but not more impact because everything that they, they, they talk about is bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? Who, you know, don't get me wrong. Yeah, Cat Williams broke the internet but bruh, that him talk calling other black men about dresses and can't act and and Luda about this and this one that has went uh, you know ten times more viral than me and you sitting here trying to come up with community um, uh, uh, problems and solve these problems and our people out here the fan base helping us solve these problems that we ain't gonna do thirty six million yeah. or that that's the problem the mindset. Yeah. That should be this should be just as important video. Now if, if you and I get on here and and we talk about Andre three thousand that flew oh, that flute album. Matter of fact, let me play an F circle. <laughs> no, nah, don't right. nobody want to hear no. I'm tired of your flute album. I want you to finish what the hell you was talking about because you was making an excellent point, but now you want to get on Andre three thousand and his flute. That's for you, Dre. 
trying to get I'm trying to get an album out of Dre and then get on the album. Not gonna happen. I'm pushing for an Andre three thousand album just to let you know. You know, so gonna, Andre can help with the with the community. We gonna yeah. go we gonna double back to Andre in a little while. <laughs> right. I don't want you to finish talking about what you was talking about. Um but but I mean to wrap it up, big guy, like I said, I think that uh that you know, it's you know, I like to look at it that the glass is half full. I think we're gonna be. I, I, well, I definitely know we're gonna be out because one, we are resilient people. We have we have come a long way. Uh, King would be proud of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're sitting up in here, be be high. We're looking over the city. That is progress. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Some progress. We have made progress. And you know um, what? And it's funny that you say that because I was talking to another business owner in this building, and he was telling me about somebody that came in to rent out a space from him inside the building, and he said that that brother cried because he said 30 years prior he had a business. And he was trying to get in this building, and he couldn't get in the building. And couldn't get in the building. Right. So, I mean, progress has happened. Absolutely. Over those 30 years. I feel like, you know, education is the key. We have to educate ourselves so that we can start to think deeper into these problems to find solutions. Because, you know, the easy solution is violence. That's the easy solution to any situation right. is to hit back. Right. But the question is, how do we heal How do we find ways to make the situation better than when we left it? Because right now it seems like everything is getting worse as we go along, man. And there are factions in our community that's doing extremely well and working hard, and they ain't on the BS too, and we need to shine a light on them and promote them and make that the end thing to do. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times, you know, that's what messed up the music. We was having a conversation the other day, and we was just talking about being from the hood or urban environments. And we would say out of 10 boys, there might be two gangsters growing up in there. Mm-hmm. The other eight boys is regular guys just growing up in the hood <laughs> with everybody else. Right, unless it was that movie American Gangster where all the brothers were selling it dope. I just thought I threw that in. That, that too, but my you best got friend was, My best friend was in that movie. Yeah, uh, no, tip. You, you, you tip, your best friend. <laughs> but you had gangster families. Right. But I say that to say, when you look at the music, it's not a correct depiction of the actual hood. Right. Because not everybody is sexy red. And everybody has a switch. Right. But in the hood, every little girl ain't sexy red, and every little boy ain't running around with a doggone switch. Correct. So what happened to the music that would accurately depict what's going on in the hood that would show that, hey, man, I'm from here, but I'm just having a good time every day. I'm from here, but I just like being a player. I'm from here, but I'm working to make (laughs) my community better and the world around me better. The music is not amplifying that message. And that's what's fucking up everything. Because the OGs have been pushed out. Mm. That's the problem. When once you grow old and then you're older, older. I don't want to say old, older. I'm not even old, but older. Yeah. And your message change. You get a little wiser. Then all of a sudden you're not cool no more. Mm-hmm. You know. And I don't know. I've, I, I'm still trying to figure that out. If somebody out there knows. What's the source of this? Uh, why does rap? Ain't nobody got no nuts. Why does rap have an age limit? I can't. I can uh, Ain't nobody I do got not no nuts. Understand Wick. for the world of me that we have. You can be a contractor to your your nine. You can be. You can. You can change roofs. Be the president of the United you States ch- at ninety. You can change. <laughs> you know, put shingles on roofs at seventy five. Yeah. You can be a mechanic to you, but when it comes to a rapper. You outdated at 35. Well, you know, I'm you need be to sit real down. With, you know, people that are in charge of mass media don't have the nuts enough to put the correct content in front of the people. Right. And if they're not putting the correct content in front of the people, uh, that's because they don't give a damn. Right. So we need more people of power to say, okay, let's push the culture forward. Mm-hmm. If you in Atlanta... I should turn on the radio and mm-hmm. hear Atlanta music. Correct. If I'm in Memphis, I should hear Memphis music. If I'm new in New Orleans, I should hear New Orleans music. Correct. I should hear the music from those regions. Why? Correct. Because it empowers the community and the money in those regions. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? I understand. So we use these platforms to push the culture forward, but then also the kind of music that we suggest to people and to the audience to get behind. Some of it needs, so it's the, Two out of ten. 
two out of them ten songs can be ratchet and ghetto and gangster. But that's what and we're the pushing. Other eight songs can need be to good. be good, positive music. But they're not pushing the, the other eight. The, they, what's being pushed what is the, the two. Ain't nobody got no nuts. Everybody's so scared of what they boss gonna make them do. Mm-hmm. Everybody's so scared to be different mm-hmm. that they want to go along with the flow. So even the people that's supposed to be in charge, they are sheep, just like the people that they supposed to be leading. It ain't no leaders leading. Correct. So, so you then, saying there's no new uh, uh, kings out here, or is uh, are, are the are there new kings out here? But they're just not being. We're not highlighting them. Well, I'm going to tell you who the guy is. It's Killer Mike. Correct. That's him. Right. So, with that being said, Killer Mike has a Grammy-nominated album, Michael, that's going crazy as hell. Right. Grammy-nominated. Correct. Why is he not in full rotation in every radio station in Atlanta? I agree. I just sat in a meeting with Killer Mike and Bobby Kennedy Jr. the other night. Mm. Killer came in that thing and snapped. Uh Uh-uh. Laid the platform and the foundation for solutions in our community. Correct. Why ain't we highlighting this man and making and pushing his music forward? Absolutely. So that he can better impact the community Absolutely. with a pure heart. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. And I, and I agree 1,000 percent with you. And I got and I got to shout out Killer Mike, man. Killer Mike, and he has been doing it. He's been consistent He's at it. He's been doing that a- since he was a damn kid. Absolutely. So um I mean, I don't know behind. I'm I'm just a kid from the Cater man. I I you know, I just put the I posed the question. Uh, we got over three hundred thousand people out there that are smarter than us, and they can they can help out with these types of uh, problems that we have. Gift solutions. Uh, I look forward to looking at the comments because uh, uh, I do look at the comments when it comes to these type of uh, talks that we have. Yeah. So uh, and maybe people can you know let us Give know us some is solutions. it yeah is it you know I I would say I'm gonna leave leave you with this. I think it's gonna start from. Us OGs, and that's male and female. That's correct. Black, white, ever, what is like minded people. Yeah. Like minded people saying enough is enough and, and keep doing what we're doing. And I think that it'll grow and it'll get bigger and it'll get bigger. And people, you know, nobody wants to sit out here and die, bruh. Come on. You know man. what I'm saying? I, I don't think that these kids, um, you know, yeah, they look cool up there, they misled. I got my, my AK and I got this. But deep down, bruh. Kids want to be able to make them some money, you know, have them a girl, have a couple of kids, man, and not have to be out here, you know, running up in stores or taking penitentiary chances. Not the, the average person. Exactly. The average black male. Um, so, I mean, I don't know how we how we change that, but I think that it starts with you and me. Hey, I'm going to need y'all to hit these comments in this thing. Let me know what needs to happen to make this community a better place for us to raise our damn kids in, okay, for thanks. us to be able to help our parents out, our elderly, and make it a safer place for our senior citizens. You know, uh, thoughts and prayers for Yo God and his family right now. Rest in peace to Big Jook. Yep. And uh, I'm going to sit there right there. Well, you got one more thing. We uh, uh, January the 28th. Oh, yeah. Yeah, January 28th, we dropping and, and, uh, d- this video with uh, Wicked, Galaxy Wick, and CeeLo. So it's going to be the east side versus south side. The first time Break we don't, the this is the first time we don't came together, the east side, and, you know, and the west side, the south side, all together on a record. Um, and that's going to be January 28th. The world premiere is going to premiere right here on Beehive. For people that don't live in the city, you will be at 8 o'clock, Shaw. Beehive will have this video up. We're going to watch it. We're going to share it. And uh, for people that do live here, and especially on the east side, we will have a viewing party at the spot off Flat Shows and Candle Road, where we're going to view that thing live. I'm going to have all of my celebrity partners there, man. I can't even go down the list of people that's going to be in the building. I know that I might, I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to let you come or not. Why? Because, I mean, I, ed- I edited you out the video. Well, you do got me in there looking like I'm chewing tobacco the whole damn video. Okay. We got the side of your head. Yeah, you got to be over there chewing tobacco going, I was like, okay, now. My jaw just look, I'm in there, man, I don't even want to go there. The flute, we got uh, my boy, the flutist. Um, John William John Flawless, William man. Flawless, he, he, uh, he in there. Um, and he's new playing, face is starting play, in the damn play, video. I don't know if it's your song, CeeLo song, or new, new face. face no, 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 new face is starting in there, man. Hot boy Turk is in there. What you up, know what Turk? Jody Breeze, man. Jody the, Breeze. Them young bloods in the building, the man. And the, was lit, in the building. Oh yeah, man. We even had a, a old school mojo, which was the mojo. first rapper 
in the South, basically. Exactly. Came out of 82, man. I had uh, Mojo in the building, man. And the list goes Raheem on and on. Raheem, man. Mook B in the building, man. Mook. Some of the baddest women, man. Sasha yeah, Gomez, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Tia Culver, what's happening? Yeah, what so, up, no, it was, Yeah, Bonnie Bands. We, we, we in the building, man. It's, it's just it's going to be a great video. Everybody's going to be there. The food there is amazing. It's at the spot. That's the name of the, uh, at the club. Okay, the spot. And the food, because you are greedy. Share, remember when you came and Sharon <laughs> ate up all my fish for my birthday, man? I'm still mad at you about it. That so the fish food was is good a- as hell. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> but that yeah, man, January 28th, man, y'all fuck with your boy, man. New video coming. Holla at the man. Hit them comments again, man. We'll see y'all in a minute. Be hot, ready, yo, shout it. Big Galaxy. Yes, sir. We gone.